Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create beautiful red and white look in Luminar Neo. The red and white look highlights the contrast between the two colors on the image and it tunes down the rest of the colors to balance it. This look can be used at any time of the year, but it's even more popular during the festive season when the combination of red and white colors is very popular. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the editing process and show you how to save the look as a preset so you can use it on your photos in the future. Now, before we're going to do that, I want to quickly talk to you about our Luminar Neo Winter Bundle, which also includes the red and white look collection. Our brand new Luminar Neo Winter Bundle includes over 860 winter assets for your favorite tools in the software. Get it and get extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames, LUTs and presets. Get all of that and transform your winter images with just a few clicks. To top it off, the winter bundle include bonus festive mini bundle full of incredible assets for the festive season. To get the best offer, follow the link in the description of this video or head directly to our website cleverphotographer.com Okay, so that is all out of the way and we can finally start with the editing. As you can see, we are already in Luminar Neo and we are starting in the catalog module. We are starting by looking at the sample files and as always, if you want to follow me along, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and that will bring you into our Dropbox account. From there, you can download the files and follow me on your own computer. So for the edit, we're going to be using this image with the lady here in a red sweater. As it works very well, you can see we have a lot of white and red. So we just click on it to select it and then move it into edit module. We're going to do that by clicking on the edit on the top of the screen or we can hit E on our keyboard. Now, as always, we're going to start first by developing the image or with a basic edit in the develop tool here in essentials in our main toolbar. Simply click on it to open it, make it nice and visible, and we're gonna start from here. The first part we're gonna jump into is the optics. So we can close the light and open the optics section. Here, I want to click on the auto def range. So we have that done and we can close it. After this, we're gonna take care of the sharpness and noise reduction. Now remember that we're gonna create this look with thinking that we're going to be using it on a pictures in the future, on a more pictures. So we're not looking really specifically at this image. We're more thinking on how to set it up so it can apply to as many images as possible. So to start this, we're going to go into the noise reduction and we're going to set it to 20%. 20% is a good value. It doesn't affect the image and it will work with most of the images. Once you set it to 20, we can close this section and move into the sharpness. Now, usually at this point, I would tell you to zoom into 100%, adjust the sharpness based on your picture and continue from there. However, once again, we are focusing on overall look. So let's set up the sharpness to 40, which is once again, good value to start with. Masking, I always set it up between 60 and 70, regardless on the image. So let's set it to, let's say 65 and leave it there. For those who don't know what masking is for, it helps us to make sure that we are only sharpening the areas with the textures, edges, and details. Once we're done with the noise reduction and sharpness, we can close both of the sections 
and move to the top of the tool. Here we're gonna open the light and make few adjustments here. Once again, very basic adjustments. I quite like to bring the exposure down a little bit as we're gonna do more adjustments with the curves. So somewhere around minus 0.45 will work well. After this with the contrast, I think somewhere around 10, just to get a little bit of contrast out of the image. And with the highlights and shadows, I would just go to the standard minus 25 on the highlights and plus 25 on the shadows, somewhere around here. After this, we can close the light section and open the blacks and whites. With the blacks and whites, we're gonna turn it a little bit around. Usually I would go with the blacks down and with the whites up. However, this time we're gonna actually take the blacks and bring them to plus 15. So we're gonna crush them down a little bit. And with the whites, we're gonna bring them into minus and usually somewhere around minus 20 to minus 25 works well. So if I open both of the sections, we have brought the exposure down a little bit. We have added a little bit of the contrast. We have then set highlights and shadows to highlights in minus 25 and shadows to 25. After that, in blacks and whites, we have made the blacks a little bit brighter with going up to plus 15. And with the whites, we have added minus 25 on them. Once we finish, once again, close this section and we're gonna continue. Now we're gonna make some adjustments in the curves, but before we're gonna do that, we're gonna go into the color section. Here we're gonna use the traditional method of taking the saturation down, so the overall saturation with the saturation slider down to somewhere around minus 10, and then work with the vibrant slider, bring it up to around 20 or 25, which then takes the colors that are less dominant and make them more saturated. Once we finish here, we can close this and move into the curves. Now for some photographers, curves can be a little intimidating. And if that's your case, make sure that you watch our tutorial on how to use curves in Luminar Neo. And I will make sure that I put the link in a corner of the video now. Why are we gonna use curves? Well, curves is one of the best tool that once again works very well with presets and multiple images. Yes, we could make these adjustments in the light section and so on, but the curves work very well. So first make sure that you on the gray curve here, click on it, and then just make one point in the middle of the curve. And all I want you to do is to bring it up a little bit. So basically what we're doing is we brightening the image. If you never used the curve before, this area is focusing on highlights, this area on shadow. But don't worry too much about it. Let's just move into the red curve. Here we're gonna create the traditional S curve, which help us to create a contrast. So traditional S curve looks like this. You make one point in the middle, one point up, one point down, and then you just create the S, one and two. This is the traditional S curve. Now our shape will be just a little bit different. We will make the bottom a little bit stronger, then bring this point up here and this point up a little bit. So I think more like this. Now it's not looking great so far, but don't worry about it. We're just creating contrast. So we're gonna recreate exactly the same shape in our green curve. So click on that. And remember one point, two points, three points. And now just take your time and recreate the same shape as we have created with the red curve. So now we're done here. And finally, we jump into the blue. One, two, and three. And just take the one point, second point, and third point. And once you finish, you will see that we got more contrast. However, the colors are back to the normal. So let's quickly have a look at the before and after. And you can do that by clicking on the eye icon in the top right corner of the tool. So before and after. And you can see it's actually quite nice. We got a really nice contrast. We have a little bit more warmth and all is looking well. So now we are finished here in the develop tool. So we can close it, apply it to the image and we're gonna continue. As always, don't forget that if you wanna come back and do further edits on the tool, you can just click on the edits on the top of the main toolbar and the develop tool we started with is here. Now let's go back to the tools. And from here, we are gonna go and move into the color tool. So we are still on our main toolbar, we are in the essential section, and we're gonna go in the color tool. 
Once again, we have a full tutorial on how to use this tool. So if you're not sure, make sure that you watch it. And now we're gonna go into the HSL panel, which is down here. You just click it opens. Let's make it nice and visible. And in the gray dropdown box, we're gonna start by adjusting the hue. So select the hue. And now we're gonna go through adjusting each of the colors here. Now, what we're gonna do first, we're gonna work on the hue, adjust the colors, makes them the way we like. After that, we're gonna go into the saturation and luminance. So hue first, with the red, I would actually like the red to be more on the orange side. So now I can make the red more on the purple on magenta, or I can make it more of the orange. So I want it more of the orange, but not too much, just somewhere around, I think 12, it's gonna look quite nice. With the orange colors though, on the picture, I would like them to be more as red, less as a yellow. So for that, we're just gonna bring the slider, let's say somewhere around minus 10 or minus 11. After that, looking at the yellow. With the yellow, similarly, I want the yellow to be more like an orange. So we're gonna bring that down to somewhere around minus 15. With the green, I don't worry too much about it. We could do like a little minus one or two just to make the green a little bit more yellow, but don't worry too much about it. Then we move into the cyan. With the cyan, what we wanna do, we actually gonna bring it down to somewhere around 10 to make the cyan more blue. After that, we're gonna move into the blue, and with the blue, we wanna make the blue a little more purple. So let's go to, let's say, somewhere around minus 20. Now, maybe it's not so much visible on this picture, but trust me on it, it's gonna work quite well. After that, with the purple, we want the purple to be more like magenta. So let's go to 30, and we're gonna finish it off with the magenta itself, where we add 15 to make it all work together. So if you want, you're more than welcome to note these numbers. You can pause the video. And once you finish, we can continue. Now it's time to move into the saturation. So we're gonna click on the drop down box and move to saturation. In saturation, we don't have much to do. All we need to do here, we're gonna bring the saturation of the red down just a little bit because it's a little bit strong. Then we don't worry about the orange because there's not much here anyway. And then with the yellow, let's bring it down again, minus 10 or maybe like minus seven will look good too. With the green, because we want just the red and white, we don't want green to be dominant, let's also bring it to somewhere around minus 10. The rest of the colors, we don't worry about them too much and we will move into the luminance. Once again, if you want, more than welcome to pause the video, take these numbers, add them in and then continue. So now we're gonna go into the luminance where we're gonna be adjusting the brightness of the colors. So with the red, as you guessed it, we want it a little bit darker, not too much, but somewhere around 10. After that, we're gonna move to the orange. Once again, make it a little bit darker, keep an eye on the skin especially, and let's go somewhere around minus 15. Moving on with the yellow, let's just go very gently here to minus five. Then we can move to the green. With the green, we actually wanna go quite low. I would go as far as minus 25 here. Then to the cyan, with the cyan, let's go to minus 15. With the blue, minus 25. And then moving into the purple and magenta. The purple, we wanna actually bring it down just a touch. And with the magenta, we wanna make that brighter. So let's go to somewhere around plus 15. Once we're done dialing all of that, let's just double check the image. Maybe with the red, I would actually go even darker. Let's just go minus 15 here. And that's about it. Now, once again, we can double check the before and after. And I think the difference is huge. So now we close the color tool. And once again, let's jump into the edit section where we have the color and develop. So that's what we've done so far. Let's go back to the tools and let's talk about some additional tools we could apply. So now we're gonna move to the lower part of our main toolbar where we can add some special effects. Let's start with the mystical tool, open it and just increase the amount a little bit to give us a little bit of a glow. I think 10 is looking great here. After that, to make it a little more vintage, we could add a little bit of film grain. Nothing crazy, but I think maybe just like five or 10 always looks really nice. And again, make it just a little bit more romantic. So that's the film grain. And after this, what we could do, if we want to highlight the white even a little bit more, we can then use the high key tool in the portrait section of the main toolbar. 
Once again, if you never used it before, make sure you check out our tutorial. But for us, let's just open it and increase the amount a little bit. Keep an eye on the image. I think somewhere around 10 is looking great. So now we are done. We can close all of this. And let's check the before by going to the bottom of our screen. And let's have a look at the after. And I think the result is really, really nice. I really like it. So now, how do we save this as a preset? To do that, we are here at the bottom of the screen, so we can just click on the actions here and here click on save as preset. Once you click on that, you will be automatically moved into the presets module and in your main toolbar here, the new preset will appear with the icon of the image you're working on and now you can choose the name for it. So let's call this red and white. Once you're done, you just hit enter and the preset will be saved. Now, how you double check that it's gonna work on other images? Well, it's really simple. Let's go back to our catalog module where we have the second image. Let's right click on it, click on adjustments, revert to original, just to make sure we have no edits applied to it. And now we can click on the image again and just move it into presets module. In a presets module, you're looking at the main toolbar and this time at the folder called my presets. Click on that and it will open all the presets that you created yourself. As you can see on the top, we have our red and white preset. So just click on it and wait a moment for it to be applied to your image. As you can see, it's looking quite nice. You can double check the before and after at the bottom of your screen. And of course that what you can do now is to go into the edit module and then go into the edits and make any adjustments here based on what you like. So for example, we could actually jump back to the tools and add even more effects to it. For example, we could go into the mat tool, increase the amount here and add really nice fade to the overall image. Once again, let's have a look at the before and after. And I think the result is great. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudofphotographer.com slash Luminar Give. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.